Good afternoon. <coughs> Good afternoon. <coughs> <coughs> All right. Welcome. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I'm going to um, talk about how to relax the mind again. Um, and in order to uh, today, um, there are a few things that I want to talk. Uh, in order to bring more relaxation and uh, wisdom into your mind, Buddha Shakyamuni. 2000 something years ago, taught a few different methods known as the seven treasures of spiritual practices. Those are interest, discipline, uh, sharing, knowledge, respect, uh, for others, self-respect, and uh, discovering inner wisdom, okay? So uh, he said, whoever has these seven qualities is a genuine uh, spiritual Dharma practitioner. So the first is, as I said, interest. Interest, or you can say devotion. <clears throat> uh, this is, uh, according to Buddhism, is a um, uh, heart connection to Dharma practice. So actually, as you know, Dharma practice is more important than like... Uh, play play uh, football or watch football as Americans really loved it um, or watch movie right but people people are, if we have that today like football there are thousands of thousands of people um, interest and to watch and come but people are not so interested in practice Dharma Buddha said, this is the first. First you need, as a good practitioner, you need uh, interest or devotion uh, is very important. Uh, but uh, in Dharma practice, sometimes it could be like, you know, very boring, uh, sleepy, and uh, um, brings like dullness. Uh, but... Um, um, Teachers say that uh, interest uh, gives you great uh, blessings because uh, it opens the door to enlightenment. And without interest, without uh, devotion, there is no way to progress in your practice. And... Uh, once you uh, once you uh, encounter a teaching uh, that holds your uh, interest and understand the value of that uh, teaching and committed yourself to its practice, on that basis uh, you will be able to encourage 
to practice Dharma. And through that, uh, you will um, transform into your uh, Buddhist cult, like magnificent potential. Uh, that is what we call blessing, you know, great blessing. So uh, one of the seven treasures, this uh, quality, uh, interest, first is interest. It's very important. Without interest, even like you don't practice, you don't, <clears throat> it gives you great uh, benefit, you know. And then second, we say discipline, right? Discipline, or you can say uh, gentleness. Uh, according to Buddhism, discipline is the method that helps you to achieve uh, deep and profound, very profound meditation. Uh, so the then then uh, then relaxation and your wisdom all come into your mind, and. Uh, if your mind is calm and relaxed, um, then it is open to everything. Um, but if you, um, like, that's why this year we talk a lot about like we, uh, this how to relax the mind, right? Uh, if you think like, you know, why, uh, when you sort of try to meditate, you know, you sit down and it's very hard. Why is it very hard to uh, relax the mind? Um, it is because uh, we usually say, like, feel like, you know, uh, somewhere like uh, down there, you know, like in our mind, deep down, uh, you feel that uh, you cannot purify the strong emotions easily, especially uh, this ego mind, selfish mind, right? Uh, it's a very strong, um, bad habit. So if you really search and look into your mind, uh, somewhere you feel like no matter what, how hard, like, try, I try, meditate, I cannot purify this, you know. It's very, like, um, um, strong uh, emotions. Uh, it's very difficult to purify them easily. Therefore, that's the reason we cannot relax our mind. And not only that, it makes like this ego mind and selfish mind makes everything difficult. Um, uh, so um, the way uh, to discover nitpa in Tibetan, nitpa means like in English, discover or get. I think discover is a nice one. Discover relaxation. Discover wisdom, discover inner nature, um, basic goodness, discover. Uh, the masters have advised us is through the process of listening to the spiritual teachings, right? Uh, contemplating what you heard, um, and you put in them into action and you apply them directly through the process of meditation uh, to the needs of everyday life. So uh, it's, not, it's not that easy uh, in order to you know, discover your inner nature or wisdom or um, relax the mind. So you need all these methods, you know, training, everything like that. So um, also it's very important we need to find a middle way and to simplify our life more and more, not 
make complicate your life more and more. Um, according to the teachings, you know, like you need to uh, first you need to find a middle way. It's very important, and then slowly, like to simplify your life more and more. Uh, in Buddhism, that is what is really meant by discipline um, or gentleness. Okay, and um, uh, it is very important because relaxation. Right, everybody is looking for how to relax the mind and peace and relaxation, all of this um, uh, will come from discipline, right? Discipline is very important. Therefore, you know, my root teacher, Kanshin Jingle Pansu said, always say that the more and more you listen, the more and more you understand. The more and more you understand, the deeper and deeper your realization becomes. That's why learning, listen to teachings, spiritual teachings, learn, investigate. <laughs> That's how you uh, understand how to relax the mind. So the more and more you uh, really understand uh, the teachings takes you deeper and deeper. Buddhist teachings, believe me, there is no, like you cannot find the age of like the teachings. Oh, that's it. Uh, the more and more you understand, the more and more you learn it, um, it's limitless. That's the kind of like unique of Buddhist, uh, like especially, you know, this uh, treasure teachings, oral instructions, philosophy, like that. Uh, you cannot learn uh, Buddhism, everything, one, one's life, no way. But that's why you just uh, study and understand, understand very important. Then everything is okay because of that. That's, so there is many layers like, you know, you can how to practice. Okay, this is for beginners. This is for advanced. This is really high level like practice. One word you can, uh, uh, what do you call it? Apply or keep that into, put that into your practice. One word, many ways you can uh, meditate, you know. So therefore, uh, and also our teacher said that um, whatever your life is like, um, your Buddha nature is always there. So uh, they said you should always try and remember that your emotions do not belong to your Buddha nature. And that's very important. Otherwise, you know, people say, okay, I meditate, this and that. And then deep down there is a lot of like, uh, it's like a volcano to win for explode, you know, and then you cannot purify. You feel like strongly, the more you meditate, you don't listen, you don't understand, just only meditate, then you feel like, oh, I can't, I can't purify this, like, you know. But those things, the, 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 what we have is Buddha nature, that's our potential and opportunity, you know, to, you know, and then, and then um, this, this emotions, usually day to day, we are experience, these are not belong to Buddha nature. Uh, these are just, uh, temporary. So never think these are like just, uh, um, I can't purify, never think that. Um, and um, uh, when the mind is uh, resting um, uh, and you have a little bit experience um, um, meditation, then then your meditation can be very like healing, you know. So, um, but in order to meditate, we need discipline, okay, uh, discipline. Uh, and once there is like, uh, there is interest and discipline, uh, we can develop the third quality, which is 
sharing, or you can say generosity. So that means uh, we share uh, Dharma teachings, like we share like love and kindness, uh, compassion. We share bodhicitta uh, as a Dharma practitioner. Uh, and also we share our belongings like uh, food, wealth, etc. Right? So if there is a something um, you feel like sharing that is going to help others and sort of create joy and happiness, and then, you know, Buddha said sharing and generosity is very important. As you know, this, this modern world, samsara, uh, create a lot of uh, amazing good things, right? But at the same time, uh, also create a lot of problems. Mm, and therefore, um, it takes away the source of real joy and happiness and good sort of what you call it, human qualities. So therefore, uh, Buddha said the third quality is sharing, discipline, the, the generosity. Uh, so I always think that sharing the bodhicitta mind is the best uh, generosity. Uh, that is why, as you know, like uh, I teach bodhicitta all the time and let you practice a kind mind. Um, so, because, uh, you know, no matter um, whatever we practice, our goal is to benefit others and ourselves, right? Directly, either directly or indirectly. That is the goal. That is the bottom line. So sharing a kind mind um, and um, you can call like spiritual generosity. Spiritual generosity is kind mind, sharing kind mind, love and kindness. It's a good way to uh, practice um, non-attachment. Non-attachment. That, that is the thing, right? Um, so therefore, sharing is very nice, very good. Um, and then the fourth treasure of spiritual practitioner is knowledge knowledge, right? Or you can say understanding, knowledge or understanding. Uh, this is also important <clears throat> because uh, we have so many um, obscurations and ignorance that our knowledge is very limited, right? Um, uh, our uh, wisdom is amazing. It's limitless, but ignorance uh, that our knowledge, you know, is very limited. So if we, for instance, if you like look into your life, um, you will see clearly that there are so many uh, like unimportant things we're doing, you know, um, and there are so many things that we really uh, don't need to take responsibility for, you know. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, when we are involved in only uh, worldly concerns, uh, then we don't think our life properly. Um, Life is very precious, but also, you know, very fragile. For example, Buddhist teachers say that we don't know if we will breathe out and then will not be able to breathe in again. Um, life is very fragile. It's as simple as that. Um, as you know, many people died unexpectedly or unpreparedly. Uh, so when you look deeply into your life, 
you all realize there, there is nothing that is uh, permanent, constant, permanent. So this is uh, really something that we need to realize, uh, something that we need to remember constantly. Um, each and every day. And if you think about life, like, you know, doesn't everything we have done in the past seem like a dream now? I mean, that's what how I feel about everything in the past. You know, I went to monastery uh, when I was seven years old. Um, and I then studied uh, uh, the religion, you know, this Buddh Buddhism. Uh, I did a lot of, uh, what do you call it, the pujas, right, with uh, those uh, older, old, older lamas and with, uh, with those monks um, at the monastery. Uh, but uh, all are gone. There's no even like one that during that time, like when I was with uh, with these lamas uh, that we do, uh, you know, I studied from them and we uh, make this made pujas together. None of them left, mm -hmm. all gone. And then I studied like Buddhism, you know, with my root teachers, as you know, all passed away, all gone, right? And. Uh, <laughs> The school that uh, uh, we had during my time, uh, it is totally different now, totally different now. When I go there, uh, and um, it's like uh, it's like uh, it's like a dream, you know. Uh, when I look at the place that uh, used to like, oh, this this would be my room. This is my dharma friend's room, like. All gone. Nothing is there. Nothing is there. It's changed everything. I just recognize the the place that's still there, right? But then the the how they build, how right now the people live there. Uh, the Tibetan culture is changed. Um, everything is like that. It's like uh, nothing is there now, actually. So only be like uh, my memory. Um, so, you know, things like that. That's not like uh, just one, but everything is like that, right? So I'm sure same is with your situation too, you know, when you go to school or with your parents or whatever, whatever you, everything is now, when you think about it, it's everything like a memory. It's like a dream. That's exactly what Buddha is uh, asked to understand, to recognize that, you know, and... Uh, Almost uh, like uh, we have left all of our uh, past moments sort of behind, you know. Now, like, for example, at this moment, like today, this moment, uh, for example, we are you know, all here together, right? But soon, I'm sure soon, this will only be a memory. You know, it's like that. So uh, that's the same thing, like, when you, when you really look into deeply into your life, you know, like, uh, oh, today, today I feel very good. Things are going very well. But then, you know, tomorrow I will change it, right? So, uh, so that's, uh, that's nothing. I'm not talking about like something negative, but that's how it is. That's how life, our life is. So, <laughs> So that's why Buddha said this is knowledge, you know, the wisdom, developable wisdom is very important. If you don't, if we understand this, um, we change. Uh, we change the way we live. We can change the way we feel. And uh, 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 we have less attachment to th things. You know, uh, and if we don't understand this, then we tend to sort of cling to things and have a strong uh, emotional reactions to things that are really sort of temporary, right? <laughs> temporary. Um, if 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 you 
uh, if I think about like this, uh, what I said, these things like if I understand uh, 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 this change thing, like uh, impermanence, all of these things, it doesn't give me like negative, like uh, like sadness or emotion. I just understand, okay, that's how it is, right? So uh, when I go back and there's nothing left, uh, you know, and, and I totally everything different, oh yeah, that makes sense, understandable. Uh, that's like, you know, um, but still, if we don't understand these things, then, oh my God, this, my room is gone, my teachers, my friends are gone, everything like that. Then, you know, your negative emotion, this thing, you know, like uh, very strong emotions, then you react and then you, you know, attach to these things and then you're going to suffer mentally, physically, like all of that. But once you understand, like me, like nothing, you know, I'll go there, everything's done okay that's everything is gone that's it uh, so so therefore buddha uh, give us like this you know knowledge is very important which is like uh, uh, you know um, it is important to realize how fragile our life is and how also not just like that but also like precious how our life is very precious it is right you have to understand do you remember uh, Buddha said uh, that uh, all of footprints that of the elephant is spring? Um, all of mindfulness meditation that on impermanence is spring, profound, right? Uh, do you know why? I don't know footprints, uh, all of the footprints that the elephant footprints is the spring. I think continuing open so one time we thought, why? Why elephant footprints the spring? But they said like it's like very uh, circular and huge. Like one time, like continuing uh, open, my root teacher, he is actually a very big guy. But when he sit on the elephant sprint, um, still like, it's huge. So maybe that's why I don't know. So, but uh, but uh, um, all of the the, the practice, mindfulness, meditation that on uh, the impermanence uh, and life, impermanence of life is the best. Is the the, the the spring, you know, very important. That's why it is so important to practice meditation on impermanence. Right? It's not don't think about a negative way. But it's it's uh, you have to understand what what is your life. That's that is uh, if you practice, uh, you, if you meditate on permanence of life, then you understand your life. So anyway, that's uh, fourth, and then fifth, uh, ten years of spiritual practitioner is uh, respect for others, respect for others. So according to Buddhism, uh, to have respect for everyone is uh, an antidote to obscurations such as uh, pride and arrogance. Mm, so, you know, this means that we may feel like uh, we are special, very important. But, uh, you know, um, everyone has a unique and uh, beautiful qualities, right? So we need to, uh, what do you call it, equalize. Um, any sort of, you know, attitudes that stand between ourselves and uh, all other beings. Um, that is why uh, Buddha said that we should respect everyone, not just humans, but also like animals, you know, we should respect. Because by, 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 by respecting others, we, uh, we get... Uh, to at least like we get two good things. Uh, first, uh, we discover the pure sort of beauty in everything uh, rather than making judgments all the time. And we start to have a clear understanding of others uh, if we respect um, others. Um, and then um, I said like at least two things, that's one thing. And second thing is like it also helped 
as um, maintain the discipline of gentleness so we uh, don't become uh, crazy, you know? <laughs> so uh, uh, Buddha often um, spoke about how important respect is, uh, not just, uh, you know, between human beings, and, but um, animals, and even like towards natural like environment, very important to respect. And then sixth is self-respect, okay? Self-respect comes with a joyous uh, appreciation of um, your life, your situation. Even though like there are difficulties in this life, right? Uh, but we still have many things for uh, which to be grateful. Um, and uh, understand this very important. Self-respect is not based upon ego cleaning, but is a valuable attitude to uh, encourage us in the work of improving ourselves and helping others. Um, and beyond worldly concerns, um, we should recognize that our simple, like human life, is real treasure, precious. Just uh, being human is very special. And the recognition of this truth brings peace and relaxation within ourselves and harmony in relation to others. So, as you know, Buddhism, you know, like in the teachings of Buddhism, we always say like, even like difficulties are to be appreciated because, you know, uh, whatever the situation, we are always learning something. If you like, if you really respect and if you really um, sort of not ignore your life uh, or not ignore like negative things, um, always uh, there is a something that we can learn, you know, something that we can learn. So then that uh, we have better life. So we should not be sort of discouraged. Um, and it's important to appreciate. It's important to appreciate. I always say this, right? Many times, 100,000 times. Appreciate every moment of life, day to day, like happy and appreciate your life, every moment. You know, you have a precious human life, you have good opportunities. Um, so this is amazing. At the same time, as I said, life is very fragile. You never know what will happen. So that means that means do something good. Um, if you can do something good for others, at least do something good for yourself. Don't sort of judge um, all the time and sort of ignore yourself, ignore your Buddha nature or quality, you know. Uh, this, this body is like, according to tantric teachings, this body is like a deity, you know. So it gives you wisdom, inner wisdom, and everything. So therefore you have to appreciate uh, every moment of your life. That is what we call self-respect, self-respect. Not like, not think like I'm better than this, I'm better than this and that. Um, that's, that's arrogant, but uh, this is very precious. Uh, time is precious, life is precious, life is fragile, so I don't have time to waste. So I have to do something. So it gives you great potential like meditation so that you can, uh, you know, uh, 
take care of your human uh, important uh, uh, life. So if we appreciate uh, ourselves, um, the rest of life, life begins to uh, be transformed into relaxation, peace, and beauty. And that is why self-respect and gratitude are very important. Um, you know, uh, you may be having some problems presently, but uh, it will not last forever, right? Forever. Because uh, uh, sometimes you have very, everything is going well. Everything is good. It gives you like, uh, oh, like too much energy. I am better than this. I have the best. But mm, not last forever. Go down. Sometimes you feel like you're exhausted. Uh, I can't do anything. This is so bad. I, I just, you lose your confidence. Every, not true. It's not true. It's just temporary. It's not, uh, it, it, it will not last forever so that you can change, you know, right? So that's very, the beauty part of your life, you know? Uh, good things, not always good. Bad things, not always bad, right? So it is helpful for us to be strong and have sort of self-respect, self-confidence, you know? why we learn to be of benefit to others. Anyway, that is the sixth. And then seventh is very important. Seventh is inner wisdom. Inner wisdom. Okay? Inner wisdom reveals our Buddha nature. Okay? And that is, that is what we call uh, enlightenment. Enlightenment or liberation. So, all living beings have the opportunity to awaken and discover the truth of life and uh, the abilities we have. So if we, teachers say like, you know, if we didn't have Buddha nature, we would not have the potential of uh, uh, enlightenment, Buddhahood. No matter how hard we try, um, we would never achieve enlightenment, right? So, uh, but but uh, we have Buddha nature because we have proof. Many there are so many enlightened beings. We have we have proof. We can understand this truth or the truth of this, this uh, Buddha nature, whatever, we, we can understand through our, actually not like proof, but through um, our personal like experience, personal experience. Uh, we can see that when you meditate, oh my, like for instance, anger, you know, when you meditate, so you, you, you have experience, your anger is, goes down. If you don't practice your anger always, no matter what, sometimes like, the, the, you know, like anger, anger people, you know, like strong around them, everything is negative, you know, something is always wrong. But we have this experience, do we? I can see like you, you are, you are doing better and better each and every year. I know that. Um, so myself was too, you know, like I'm better than uh, last year. There should be. Otherwise, like why? It's impossible. Always same. No good. The, if, sometimes people just stay same. Years and years in same. Some people are just getting worse and worse. That means you, you are not practice. You don't practice. Then how you diminish, how you purify your negative. If you... You have to prove, you have to develop little by little, each and every year different. Okay, I'm better than this last year. I'm better. You have to understand that. So, because we can do, because Buddha nature, Buddha nature. So, uh, when we uh, discover this inner wisdom, they call it inner wisdom, Buddha nature, uh, 
then what, when we discover this inner wisdom, uh, this world is nirvana. That's it. This world is nirvana. So, until then, this world is, we call it what? Samsara, right? Samsara. But once you discover inner wisdom, then automatically, for you, not for everybody, but for you, this world is nirvana. So, start with interest and uh, devotion, discipline, and work up to self-respect. All are designed to help us discover our inner wisdom. All of that. That is the last, the final one is the, we have, or we need all this devotion, whatever you call it, interest, discipline, all of this. Why? Because it helped to find or discover inner wisdom. So inner wisdom is the most important, our basic goodness. So that's the thing. So how do we do this? Meditation is the key that opens the door to getting inner wisdom. As you know, after meditating a peaceful, uh, relaxed mind arise, right? So you should try to make a little time each day for meditation, okay? And as you continue to practice uh, the instructions, um, then meditation slowly arise. You have to understand, everything cannot be discovered at once, right? But if you create a good condition in your mind, then inner realization and then your deep 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 meditation will slowly arise that's why each and every year each and every day better and better and another thing is when you uh, try to meditate making everything relaxed is very important um, means don't be too loose don't be too tight uh, the what do you call it? Uh, Magic Labdun, Magic Labdun, the Jyot practitioner, uh, great uh, great mother, Magic Labdun said, "Tunji Tamla Hoji Lot," means like alert, alert, yet relax, mm. relax. Mm. Means this is a crucial point for the view in your meditation. So, means, you know, uh, if, if meditation is helpful to you, then you should make time for it every day. If you, if you, if you don't, don't feel, if you don't find any meditation is helpful, don't come here, right? It's just waste your time. Uh, enjoy with uh, other things. But if you uh, find that your meditation is helpful to you, then you have to make time for it every single day. And when you meditate, it is also important uh, to use different methods so that you will enjoy, enjoy with your meditation. Otherwise, meditation could be very boring, you know. So, there are many ways of making uh, the approach to meditation as joyful as possible. So, for instance, like you can make your meditation room very pleasant and very beautiful. Uh, means like with things like, uh, you know, if you like this uh, Tibetan tanka paintings and you put some stages, you put uh, 
you always like flowers, uh, incense, candles, and pictures of masters, so and so. Whatever it makes you enjoy when you meditate. It's very important. That's why you see this, uh, when you go to Tibet temples, it's beautiful, right? Uh, there is a reason why it's, it's, it's beautiful, because people enjoy there, meditate. Um, don't think like when you see your cushion, oh, I have to go. <laughs> That's not a good sign. So when you see your cushion, very excited, you know, like you have to do that. Even like, uh, so you can make your ordinary room I would say, like ordinary room into a great meditation room so that you enjoy meditation every day, right? That's why, like, we need beautiful uh, teaching space, like centers. We need beautiful, like, meditation room, um, like that, because you enjoy. Enjoyment is, uh, you know, it, it keeps you, keeps going, right? Meditate. So that's all. That's seven uh, different methods mm -hmm. for spiritual practitioners that Buddha uh, gave us in his sutras. So now meditate for a few minutes, and then I will let you go. It's, uh, it's a nice day. So uh, this meditation is called recognize, recognize your thoughts and relax. Because this, how you, how you relax, this actually, the topic is how to relax the mind. Recognize your thoughts and relax. So breathe in, relax. Breathe out, relax. Very simple. At the same time, at the same time, recognize your feelings, your thoughts, and relax there. Today is uh, a relax, relaxed time. Um, so it means uh, we can do that. If you know how to relax, then we can do it. Uh, it means just leave your feelings, your thoughts alone and let them come and go. You don't have to make them like come and go, but just uh, let them be. And that is your concentration, I call it. That's your concentration. The goal of your concentration is to create uh, longer times of self-awareness. Uh, and as you stabilize your concentration, you will also be aware of your thoughts and especially like distraction. Uh, so recognize, recognize the situation and let it go. That is your awareness. That is your awareness. So don't grasp or reject your thoughts and your feelings, your distractions. Just leave them alone and let them come and go. And let your mind rest in a more sort of peaceful state. And in order to do that, remember, Machi Lapton said, alert, alert, yet relax and relax. Mm -hmm. So this is very important for uh, practitioners. So keep your balance. Okay, keep your balance between tight and loose. Don't let your mind get too tense um, from inwardly concentrating. Uh, and also don't let your mind get too loose from like outwardly um, thinking too much, uh, judging too much. Those are obstacles for your meditation. So just take a middle way, okay? And then relax. Uh, breathe in, relax. Breathe out, relax. Recognize feelings, distractions, thoughts, and let them be. That's meditation. Okay? 
for 10 minutes. 